Dr. Alex Del Carmen. We've had him on before. Executive Director and Professor of School Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Strategic Studies at Tarleton State University. Nice to have him aboard, and we say hello. Dr. Del Carmen, how are you? Welcome into the Eric Casilli Show again. Good. It's good to be back with you. All right, so one of the things that we were looking at and talking about, and I've been off for a couple of days, so I haven't had a chance to have at it, it was this attack at the Flint Airport. Um, they are calling it a terrorist attack. Uh, guy comes in with a 12-inch knife and and yells, God is great, in Arabic, and stabs a you know a, a, someone in, in uniform there at the airport in the neck. And, and you know, what did you think about when you first heard this story? You know, sadly, it's, uh, here we go again. You know, the same type of uh, act that we've seen in other airports across the United States and throughout the world. And, uh, you know, they're going to continue to take place, unfortunately, and, and until we, we finally, you know, understand that we have to secure our airports in order to prevent folks like that to, to harm our police officers and our, and our citizens. So they call it an act of terrorism. What what is what's the difference? Where is the line between something that is an act of terrorism and isn't an act of terrorism? A lot of it has to do with the ideology. I mean, there are about thirty five different definitions of terrorism. Uh, it depends right. on who you ask. But the FBI, um, you know, holds sort of the definitive, uh, most universally uh, acknowledged definition of terrorism, which includes the idea that the individual must have an ideology and obviously inflict terror. Uh, based on that on, on that ideology upon others, so this clearly fits that definition. All right. So, what are we not doing at our airports that we should be doing that can at least give us the best chance of being able to respond to stuff like this? Right. So, put it in context. Right. So, after nine eleven, we we fortified the airports by getting TSA in place, by having Department of Homeland Security come in and and professionalize the whole screening process. And, and there's no question that in spite of all of the mistakes that we have been seeing over the years uh, that TSA does on an ongoing basis and accusations of profiling and whatnot, at the end of the day, for the most part, they, they keep that side of the airport secure. The, the part that concerns me is before you get through TSA, the, the area that is, that is currently not secure, that, that people can simply just drive their cars up to the curb, get out of their car, and inflict whatever type of act on others without going through any kind of screening process. Okay. Um, so we can do that and maybe screen and that kind of stuff. The question that I ask most of my guests when we talk about these kind of things, you know, we have this now hypersensitivity to race, racism. You don't want to be called a racist. Anyone can throw that tag on you. It's not, hard to defend yourself from that, but you want to be safe. If you see someone who's Muslim, I'm telling you, I have friends of mine who say, I'm not going to report anybody suspicious who's Muslim because you know what's going to happen. They're going to say, oh, you're a racist. You hate Muslims. You hate this. You hate that. How do we reconcile trying to be a nation that sort of doesn't target or profile certain people with a nation that has our eyes and ears open and, and responds with, if you see something, say something? Where's the balance here? Right. I mean, I think you hit upon probably the most important question that we have been asking ourselves in my circles over the years with regards to security and safety of our nation. I mean, at the end of the day, if you look at the history of the world, not only just in the United States, but the history of the world, most civilizations have asked themselves that question in one form or another. Are people willing to give up their rights for the sake of being safer, or are they are they okay with not being as safe as they could be for the sake of having some rights, you know, that are still in place in their society? And so, you know, more specifically, you know, what are we in the United States uh, going to allow our government to do to keep us safe while at the same time, you know, uh, making sure that our constitutional rights are in place? I mean, it's a great question. I, I mean, look, and my answer would be we give up rights all the time. You know, you, you go into an airport or you go through a metal detector or you go to certain federal buildings, they're going to make you check your gun. What do you mean I can't have a gun? You can't have a gun in this building. 
So you have to give up your Second Amendment rights if you want to be in this building. You know what I mean? There's certain rights that we have all the time. They make you do things all the time. They make you pay taxes. There's every, There are laws on the books constantly that tell you what you can and can't do and what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior that abridge your rights in other ways all the time. The First Amendment is not an absolute right. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater and defend it by going, well, I have a First Amendment right. No, you don't. We abridge rights all the time. So why do we have a problem abridging rights? to make sure that we're safe at airports. Right. I mean, if you talk to the Israelis, right, who have the best security in the world, I mean, they'll, they'll be the first ones to tell you that, although they, they love the United States, they love our country, they love what we stand for. At the end of the day, we don't have even close to the stomach or the security instincts that they have because they live constantly with the threat of being terrorized, but they know how to handle it. You know, you can't go to a mall in Israel unless you're, you're going to be subject to some sort of a screening uh, process before you actually go inside the mall. Can you imagine that in the United States and the complaints that we would have from consumers and people trying to go to a mall during the Christmas holidays simply saying, well, this is not tolerable. I had to wait in line for two and a half hours to be able to go to the mall, this and that. But then we, we complain and second guess our law enforcement whenever something goes down and saying, how come we're not safe? So that's exactly you know, right. It, it's funny. I, I think most people are willing to be inconvenienced if they think it's helping. I think the problem is, for example, at airports, you know, the long lines of this, that it feels like it's more for show. I mean, what was it? They had the thing that they had, the, like the crafty guys, and was it 94% of them got whatever they wanted through and by TSA, you know, that kind of thing. So it feels like you're doing it to make it look good, but it doesn't really make me any safer. It just is a hassle at the airport. Do you believe the TSA system that we have is working and or does it need to be overhauled or scrapped or what? So, so I think it's helping, right? So, so I mean, obviously, the, the hardest thing to be able to demonstrate is how effective prevention is because prevention then suggests sure. you have to show what could have happened if you didn't have that in place yeah. but but we do know Can't prove a negative that, right yeah we do we do know for instance that that people you know uh in, in, in through tsa lines from time to time run across bad guys that that would have otherwise done something to passengers inside the airplane we know that and, and a lot of those those instances by the way are never publicized uh, in the media because we don't want to create panic so it is working but it's not probably working to the level that it should. And once again, I'm concerned about what happens before you go through TSA. All right, so what are you working on? I mean, give me what, what can we learn from you other than this Flint stuff and me asking you know, questions about TSA? I mean, what, what's the latest with you? Well, I mean, I think we're working on right now on, on doing assessments, you know, for airports and being able to, you know, suggest to individuals that are going to have to recall and redo and restructure airport security on the outside, uh, perhaps some of the best practices that we've learned from other parts of the world, i.e. Israel. And so I think, you know, some of our students and some of our faculty are working on projects right now that hopefully will be able to demonstrate how airport security can be improved and our, our lives can be, uh, you know, secured when we go into an airport and we don't have to fear for our lives when we are picking up a loved one or perhaps leaving a terminal. What airport in the United States do you think is doing either the best job or among the best? It's really a standout for you, and why? You know, I, yeah, that's a great question, and I, and I, and I think what I, what I can tell you is, you know, LaGuardia is in the process of remodeling. We've got, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of things right now that they have security in mind in order to be able to, to help out. Uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport is, is doing a phenomenal job in providing a lot of the security, the, the local law enforcement agencies. So there are airports that, in my mind, stand out, but I'm always careful to say that no airport is ever, you know, foolproof or it's going to provide security all the time because, obviously, these changes need to be made. Of course, of course. He is the executive director and professor of School of Criminology and Criminal Justice and Strategic Studies at Tarleton State University, Dr. Alex Del Carmen. How can we get more of you for people who either have a question uh, for you directly who listen to the show or who want to get more of what you're doing and saying? Is it Twitter? Is it Instagram? Right. Do you want to, is there yeah, a website? So, What's so, the best way? So I am, I am actually on, uh, in, on, on our website, uh, www.tarleton, uh, T-A-R-L-E-T-O-N, that E-D-U, or they can email me directly, my last name, Del Carmen, D-E-L-C-A-R-M-E-N, at tarleton.edu. And as always, it's a pleasure to be on your show. You, thank, come back anytime. We love having you on. Thank you so much. Appreciate the thank time. Thank you.